Well then, uh, I want to say right off the bat that if you haven't seen Barbarian yet, you probably should not watch this video. I'll make sure and mark spoiler sections of the video, but uh, in order to talk about the themes of the movie and just what I got out of it overall, it's pretty hard to not talk about spoilery elements of the plot. Barbarian is the new film from Zach Kreger, and it stars Georgina Campbell as a woman staying at an Airbnb in Detroit. When she gets there, she finds out that the owner seemingly double booked her with a stranger. While they try to awkwardly make the most of the situation, they quickly discover that this house is more than what it seems. Barbarian is the most fun I've had in a movie in a very long time. <laughs> I hadn't even heard of it until like a couple of days before I saw it. And I saw a lot of people on Letterboxd were like giving it four star ratings and then like comparing it to uh, the movie Malignant, which was one of my favorite movies that came out last year. So I was like, oh, okay, I know where this is going. So uh, definitely checking that out. Unfortunately, it wasn't playing at my favorite uh, local indie theater but it was playing at the local multiplex, and so I went down there to see it with my girlfriend. It was a Friday night after work, uh, I think it was like a 9.50 showing, and it turns out they just put it, I didn't even know that they were gonna do this, but they put, a, they put us in the biggest theater, uh, it was like the XD theater or something like that, which is the same theater where they show like Marvel movies and Top Gun Maverick and huge stuff like that. And I was like, okay, this is weird. And it turns out there were actually a ton of other people in the theater, and I was like, I'd never even heard of this movie until like a couple of days ago. Why is everyone just showing up to this? But this is really awesome. So to sit in that theater and watch this fucking wacko horror movie uh, in the biggest theater possible, on the biggest screen possible, with a bunch of other just kind of normal people who probably don't like this kind of weird shit as much as I do, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I had so much fun doing this. It was one of the best theatrical experiences I've ever had. Uh, afterwards, I think a guy like in front of me just uh, got up and started talking about how weird it was, and I was like, okay, this is this is the kind of reaction I was looking for from all these uh, people sitting around me. I do want to say right off the bat, I don't think Barbarian is quite as weird or quite as good as Malignant. Uh, it's uh, Malignant is, a, I'll talk about it, but it holds a very special place in my heart. Uh, but I did really, really like it. And I do think the script of Barbarian works a lot better than the script that, uh, of Malignant. Uh, I don't want to spoil Malignant too much, but if you haven't seen it, uh, it was directed by James Wan, who's made a lot of uh, very big mainstream horror movies like Saw, The Conjuring, Insidious. Uh, and he was also really fresh. When he made Malignant last year, he was pretty much fresh off making Aquaman back in, I want to say 2019, 2018. Uh, which was a huge box office success. I think it made like a billion dollars. And I think a lot of his fans were expecting him to return to kind of what they were expecting. Things like, again, Insid Insidious or The Conjuring, sort of very mainstream horror movies. But what it actually did was it, w it kind of paid homage to uh, a lot of low budget films from uh, the early horror films from the early 2000s. Uh, and also the very importantly, the giallo uh, genre. Uh, from uh, sort of the 70s uh, Italian horror films. And the twist of the movie is fucking wild, and it pays homage to, uh, I would say, mostly like Frank Hennenlauter type monster movies, stuff like Basket Case or uh, maybe Frankenhooker. So I really admired the uh, audacity of James Wan to take a $40 million budget, you know, fresh off of the huge success that was Aquaman. Uh, have his fans expect something quite normal, and then, and you know, he just decides to hit them with this bus of weirdness. So, yeah, I, I love Malignant. And uh, when we're talking about the twist, I mean, Barbarian's twist isn't quite as batshit crazy as the one in Malignant, but it does make a lot more sense in the script in terms of the context and just exploring the thematic depth of the film. Spoiler alert, but in Barbarian, the twist is basically that under this house, this Airbnb, there uh, lives this horrifically uh, deformed naked woman. She just lives running around these tunnels um, and she seems to have quite strong maternal instincts. When she captures our lead character, she has her drink what is ostensibly her own breast milk. But this twist goes a lot deeper once we meet Justin Long's character, who I actually think is really good in the movie. He plays a famous actor who just happens to be the owner of the house. But he lives in California though, and there's a subplot in which uh, back in California he's accused of rape by somebody who he used to work with. And so he comes back to Detroit to seemingly lay low for a little while, and also I think he's planning on selling the house. And when he gets to the house, he starts realizing what's going on beneath it. Now that I'm explaining the plot pretty in depth, I'm starting to realize that it's a little, it's gonna start to sound a little bit nonsensical if I keep going forward. Um, trust me though, it does make a lot more sense when you actually just sit down and watch the movie. Uh, but I guess I won't go too much into the technical details just because 
it'll be a little bit boring and nonsensical on my part. One thing I really like about the movie is how it, it uh, brings in these sort of Me Too themes uh, you know, and integrates it into this horror plot really well. Um, I think a lot of times movies can get really preachy with this kind of um, message going on, but it's but it never felt that way to me at all. It felt really smooth. It sort of breaks it down into layers. Like at the start, you have this guy uh, played by Bill Skarsgård, who's the other guy in the Airbnb. And uh, he's not a bad person by any means. Like he's, you know, he's very kind to uh, our lead character, but at the same time, he does say a lot of things that are maybe overly chivalrous. And then of course you meet Justin Long's character who is a total piece of shit. Like he has very warped attitudes about consent. Uh, he probably did rape that woman that they uh, that he you know was accused of doing. But even he is nothing compared to when we finally meet the original owner of the house later in the film, and his character is straight out of like a true crime case, something like Josef Fritzl in over in Austria or something like that. Just a total monster. And in the way that the film slowly starts to explore this physical subterranean culture of the house, we sort of uh, start to go further down the rabbit hole of just terrible men. And I really thought that that was a really cool way of integrating those two things together. And I also really love the scenes that involve the woman, uh, the sort of naked, deformed woman, um, because they strike a really cool balance of horror and comedy that I don't often see in movies that come out today. Uh, a lot of the horror moments where, you know, she kills someone in a really grisly way are genuinely funny, just because right beforehand, it's, it's this naked woman just running around these dark tunnels screaming, uh, I don't know, there's something hilarious about it, but it is very brutal and quite scary. And I guess my only real issue with the movie is that the plot just feels a little bit heavily constructed. It's not easy to predict where things are going by any means, but once you start thinking about it afterwards, you can definitely see like the little points in which the writer added this and this and this, and it feels more constructed by a writer than it feels like something that could actually happen even in the context of a horror movie. So uh, just a little bit too heavily, constru heavily constructed for me. Uh, but I really did have a great time with this. Um, I'm gonna give it uh, four stars. Uh, yeah, highly, highly recommend. I feel like this is gonna leave theaters sooner rather than later in some places, so please go see it uh, if you get a chance. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this video, you can like it down below. Subscribe to the channel if you want. Uh, I've got more stuff coming out soon, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. See ya.